Hello, welcome back. So in, in this video today, we'll be talking about um, the overall concept of angular velocity and how we can um, go back, back and forth between different representations for rotation and angular velocity. So that is the, the overall topic of this module. And we have three videos each dedicated to one form of representation. So before going into any of that, maybe let, it's a good idea to go back and see what is angular velocity. We have seen it before many times, but it doesn't hurt to, to refresh our perspective. What is angular velocity? So let me do this. This. Ang, ang, I, uh, the moment I started writing, I had a type. Angular velocity is, is essentially the rate of change of orientation, orientation of a body or equivalent, equivalently a frame. So how fast that orientation is changing, that is our angular velocity. And yeah, that, that's what it is. We usually have angular velocity as a, well, angular velocity is a vector. And we usually define that vector in something we, we used to call it the body fixed frame. So we can have the, the global stationary frame and another frame that is um, attached to the body and moves with the body. We often describe our angular velocity um, with the components along the uh, body fixed axis. So these little i, i, j, k's are body fixed frame. So omega x, omega y along j, omega z along k, where this i, j, k are unit vectors of body fixed frame. So when we are describing the, the angular velocity of a body, we usually describe it in, in the frame attached to the body itself. That is more convenient. Okay, for, for this video and the rest of this module's videos, the next two ones, we are trying to find this angular velocity vector omega as, as functions of other parameters that we, that we have defined before. So a few things we looked at were rotation matrix, Euler angles, which we saw it last time, and axis angle and Euler parameters. So let's let's do that. The first one is omega versus r. So omega versus r rotation matrix. So here the goal is imagine I know somehow magically um, one of the two, either the 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 angular velocity or how my rotation matrix is changing. Let me put it r dot or R, I don't know. We, we know one of them, we want to find the other one. Just to refresh your memories, R, so let, let me maybe draw this. Um, this is big X, big Y, big Z. And I have my rotated frame, my body frame. Or is that this one little x, little y, little z? Or as some of you have pointed out, um, I could use the prime to make 
make it more noticeable. But, but I'm not going to do the prime for the rest. So rotation matrix is defined as this little i dot big I, the unit vectors, little i big J, little i big K, little j, um, big I, yeah, big I, little j, big J, little j, big K, little k, big I, little k, big J, where is the thing? Little k, big K. So that was our definition of this rotation when the frame went from big X, Y, Z to a small X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So let's first try to go uh, forward. So no, no omega. Find our dot, how the rotation matrix is changing. And our dot, um, derivative of a matrix, really means finding derivatives of each of those components. So as an example, let's look at the first one, R11, the first one. That is this element. Um, R11, where, where do my ones look skewed? Okay, R11 is little i times big I. And if I want to find the derivative, R dot 11 is, it's going to be a lot of dots, but I dot dot, <laughs> no, what? I dot times big I plus I times big I dot. And in this case, we, we pretend that the base frame, the, the capital X, Y, Z is just a stationary. And we are talking about the rotation matrix from a stationary frame to a, a rotating frame. So this one, Big I actually remains the same, it's derivative is zero. And my R11 dot is I dot, <laughs> that's funny way, funny to write it, dot I. So these are all dot product. All right, so also from the very, very, very first lecture, Remember that when a frame, this is, let me put it, recall. Video, no, not even video. It was a, a mentioned it in class, recall. When a frame rotates, with some rate omega, which is our regular velocity here. The rate of change of any of its um, unit vectors, any of the e, e dots, is omega cross that e. This could be i, j, or k in, uh, in our case. So we know this. So right now I'm trying to find I dot. So I dot, using that information, I dot becomes omega cross I, little i, dot big I. And this is R11, so this is the vector. But we are not, Done yet, it's not good looking enough. 
So let me expand it. Put it this way. Omega is omega x i plus omega y j plus omega z k little k. This one is being crossed with i, and the whole thing is dotted with big i. So let me put it R11 dot equals this. So I can do the cross product individual between components. I cross I is zero. So that the first one disappears. Then I have, which is equal to minus omega Y K plus omega Z j dot i and I can bring the r now big i inside so it is minus omega y let me check if I have my signs correct yes k little k dot big I plus omega Z, little j dot big I. And looking up here, this one, little k dot I is R31. Uh, and this one is, so I'm looking at this term and that term, j dot I, yes. So R, oh, oh. no, this is J. What did I do? No, this is I. This is I. So this this one is also R21. So long story short, it is going to be omega Z R21 minus omega Y or three one and that's it so if you know your current rotation matrix how the body um, or the frame has rotated so far and you know the rate of uh, the angular velocity omega z and omega y you can find the first component of our dot and doing the same thing Oh, uh, it's going to be, oh, do I have it even here? Huh. Oh, okay. No. So, so that is R11. You can do the same thing for R21, R31, and dot, uh, time derivative of any of those. So when you do that, R dot, which is R dot 11, R dot uh, 12, and so on, and so on in other directions. This one, all of it follows a similar pattern as what we found here. And remember a, a useful notation we defined. We can do minus omega tilde time r, and this omega tilde is a skew symmetric matrix, zero minus omega z, omega y, Omega Z, zero, omega, minus omega X, minus omega Y, omega X, zero. So if you do this dot product, I'm sorry, matrix product, you get the, the time rate change of the rotation matrix. So let me write it down and I can box it, R dot equals minus omega tilde, no way, yes, times R, no, very good. So that is if I know my omega, I can find the, the rate of change of R, R dot. The other way around, if, what, how did I write it? No, no R dot. How do we get to omega? 
Okay, so let me start from there again. R dot equals minus omega tilde times R. What I can do is multiply both sides from, from the right side. I write multiply by R transpose, so I have R dot, R transpose equals minus omega tilde, R, R transpose. This one is identity. So this is identity matrix. What I have is just minus omega tilde. And then I transpose everything. So I have R dot, R transpose, transpose equals minus omega tilde transpose. And omega tilde is a skew symmetric matrix. So if I flip this matrix on its uh, diagonal, I get the opposite of omega. So this one is actually omega tilde. And this one, when you transpose, the order is going to flip. So I'll have R transpose transpose, which is R times r dot transpose equals omega tilde and um, why am i doing this um, yeah okay so now now i have this i can Essentially, um, do the matrix manipulation of R times R dot, which I assume I know, and then compare it with the skew symmetric matrix omega tilde, you should be able to find individual um, elements omega X, Y, Z. And if you do that, it is going to look like this. Omega X is going to be R, R three one, R dot two one plus R three two, R dot two two plus R three three, R dot two three. Omega Y is R one one, R dot three one plus R one two, R dot three. Two plus R one three R dot three three and omega Z is R two one R dot one one R two two R dot one two R two three R dot one three. So if you know your R dots and your current R, you can get omega X, Y, and Z from these equations. All right, so, so that's, that's about angular velocity in relation to rotation matrix. In the next videos, we look at potentially more practical once. Although this one is not impractical because rotation matrix is great. We, we love to, to know how it's changing if, if I know the angular velocity. Uh -huh. But those ones are more closer to home. All right. So until then, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Thank you.